Father, we bless your name right now, Lord God. We honor you right now, Lord Jesus. We invite your presence, Lord God. Not only to come and visit, Lord God, but to dwell and to abide, Lord God. Lord, I ask right now, Lord God, that you would allow us, Lord God, to be found pleasing in your sight. I ask right now, Lord God, that you forgive us right now, Lord God, for our sin. Forgive us, Lord God, for our iniquities. And I thank you right now, Lord God, for your provision. Thank you for being bruised for us. Thank you for being chastised that we might have peace. Thank you, Lord God, that your flesh was ripped that we might be healed. So Father, we just thank you right now, Lord God. We choose right now to honor you, Father. And we bless your name right now. Hallelujah. We bless your name. He is king of all kings. He is Lord of all lords. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the first and the last. He is the great I Am. definitely greet every one of you and I thank God I thank the Lord that he allows me to be here with you all once again and it's my prayer that every time we get a chance to see his face and to be in his presence not just when it comes down to gathering together in a solemn assembly but even more than this, when we're alone. Even more than this, when we're at home, when we're going about our day. I cannot stress the importance enough to deal with how serious it is that we're living in a day and time where examples are needed. The whole reason why Jesus says to go ye therefore and preach the gospel unto all nations making disciples. Not just people that's going to tell you what you're supposed to do, but those who will live it out in front of you. I don't know about y'all, but I'm one of those people that sometimes I feel pretty dumb. When it comes down to getting instructions that you have to read on paper, a lot of times I take my eyes off the paper and I'm looking around like, is there somebody that could just tell me? We all have different learning styles. We all receive things on different levels. And it's up to you to know you. So many times I feel like I just wish I had somebody to tell me. And then after you tell me, show me. Show me. If you open up your word, y'all, yo, let's look at John chapter 13. John 13 and verse number 15. 
so good to see every one of you here, to see those of you all, all on Zoom as well. So good to see your face again, again, Nisa. God bless you, girl. Praise the Lord. King Sam, missing you, man. Sister Mary, thank you for being there. Sister Tamia, good to see that you got on again. Hallelujah. Minister T, you know we love you and we miss you, man. Praise the Lord. I think that's that John on there too. Brother John, praise the Lord. And Sister, Sister Wallace, I believe, may be on as well. I greet every one of you in the name of the Lord. On behalf of myself and my, my beautiful wife, Lady J, we love all of you. And I pray that something that will be spoken tonight would actually help every one of us. John 13 and verse number 15. In your Bible, this should be in red. This is Jesus Christ, your host, your Hamasiah. Jesus says, For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. I've given you an example. We're living in a day and time where people say, do as I say, but not as I do. We expect people to produce an outcome, but when we say do as I say and not as I do, I'm telling you, you need to receive the expectation, but don't look for it from me. This is a treacherous day and time that we live right now. And what I want to teach on just tonight is I just want to put every one of us in remembrance that examples have been ordered. Examples have been ordered. I'm talking about the ones that's been sent from heaven. I understand that many of us will get confused at times and not know what the expectations are and Sometimes we vacillate between one opinion and another. Sometimes we can't make up our mind. But regardless if you remain in a confused state, I need you to know that the Lord is not the author of confusion. And I need you to know that the Lord has not made any examples, has not made any Hallelujah. did not make any errors. If he called you to be an example, you will be an example. You will be an example. Everybody say, the Lord made me an example. I need you to understand we're going to be tested, y'all. There's good examples and there's bad examples. There's examples that you're supposed to follow and then there's examples that you see. If, you, if you're riding behind somebody in a car and you happen to see their car go down abruptly and come back up abruptly and the car look like it hit something so hard that it's about to make something fall off of the car. If you're behind that car, chances are you're looking to avoid whatever they hit. Because I'm using that car that if I go in the same tire tread, I'm following the example that I don't want to go through. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Everybody say examples have been ordered. Examples have been ordered. Hallelujah. Let's turn to the book of 2 Thessalonians so we can understand the depth, how serious it is that we never take for granted. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3. 
This is not optional. And it's not negotiable. Hallelujah. Second Thess Thessalonians 3 and verse number 6. Minister T, could you catch that for me? Second Thessalonians 3 and verse 6. Praise the Lord. Second Thessalonians 3 and 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walks disorderly, and not after the tradition which he received of us. Hallelujah. King Sam, can you read that same one, man? Verse 6. Yes, yes sir. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we give you this command in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stay away from all believers who live idle lives and don't follow the and don't follow the ways they have received from us. Hallelujah. Let me let you hear this easy English translation. It says, Our friends, we tell you this with the authority that the Lord Jesus Christ gives to us. You must stay away from every believer who is living in a lazy way. Which means they choose not to work out their salvation. They choose to ignore. He says people like that are refusing to obey the things that we taught you. He says, it's, it's one thing to not know the Lord, but to know the Lord and to choose with your own goal, with your own attitude to resist what the Lord is expecting from us. The scripture says, now we command you, brethren, in the name of the Lord, that you withdraw yourself. Y'all, sometimes there's times that you have to spin around people and you sense that there's an assignment, but you better always be curious to know when is the assignment starting and when is it done. There's sometimes and some people in life that it will last a lifetime. But then there's some people and sometimes that it's for a season. And when the season is up, sometimes you can feel ill-equipped. You can feel like maybe you can't even handle it. Maybe you, you learn what you're supposed to learn. But when the Lord speaks to you, the scripture says... There's a time to withdraw yourself from a brother who's choosing to walk disorderly and not after the way that we've made common to you. Verse number seven. Oscar, won't you read that verse number seven, man? Read it loud. Hallelujah. Verse seven. For you yourselves know how to out. Oh, it. <laughs> it's just thought. Ought, ought to follow our example. Yeah. We were not idle when we were with you. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Minister G, can you read that same one, man? Can you read it out the amplify? Get that microphone two minutes or more. For you yourselves know how it is necessary. To imitate our example. For we were not disorderly or shirking of duty when we were with you. Lord. We were not idle. Yo, listen. It's some people that's not going to get it if you just tell them. They want to get it. But they can't. Paul said, I know they got people like this. You got to see something. Jesus said himself, 
signs and wonders will follow the word. Y'all, sometimes a miracle is not just somebody being healed. Sometimes a miracle is not just a blind eye open. Sometimes it's a miracle that I ain't cuss you out. Sometimes it's a miracle that I didn't let you have it. And I need to be able to demonstrate what that looks like. Oh, say, you yourselves know how you're supposed to follow us. Why? Because we showed you. We demonstrated. I was an example in front of you. You don't have to be wondering, you don't have to wonder whether or not you take out a coin, heads, I'm going to do it, tail. He said, I made sure there's no, you don't have to guess. What did you see me do? Tough enough. Learn how to walk in the spirit. And fulfill not the lust of your flesh. Have you forgotten who you are? Have you forgotten what you called to? Jesus said you will be hated for my sake. Stop thinking it's about you. Yes, sir. It's about the spirit of the Lord that's on the inside of you. Everybody say I'm not that special. I might not be that special to you. I might not be that special to flesh and blood. But let me tell you who I am special to. I'm special to the one that called me. Uh, the one that said he knew me before the foundation of the world. And he expects me to know who I am because of what he said. And he said, you know what? Me saying it to you ain't even good enough. I need to send you an example. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And the word became flesh. Why? To give you an example. <laughs> y'all ain't been looking at the news. Y'all haven't been looking at media. You think the gospel is not being attacked? Who's going to be able to stand? Ooh, boy. Who's going to be able to stand? The ones who have an example. I guarantee you, everybody that you see that's strong, if you think they're strong, sometimes you ought to say, what did you see? Hallelujah. Who did you watch? Yes. Who was a demonstration in front of you? Hallelujah. It's time out for displays. Bump against the wall and the display fall down and crack. The display look good, but you can keep a display like it's a football. But a demonstration. God is eye on you like, don't try that with me. Don't try to kick me like that. I'm liable to lay hands on you. I will pray for you. And if you hit me, I might look at you in a way that you're going to look back at me and say, I made a mistake. Huh? You might not know. You might do something wrong to me and you may spend the next 10 years paying for what you did to me one time. You think the scripture is a lie when the scripture says, touch not my anointed one and do my prophets no harm. Praise the Lord. He said, you know yourselves how you ought to follow us. He said, we behaved ourselves. We never carry ourselves in a disorderly manner in front of you. I didn't leave you to guess this. I showed you. Boy, if you, if you truly choose to dedicate your life to the Lord, you better believe this because he's expecting you to be an example. Y'all, we're not even done, y'all. Verse number eight. Look at, look at this, look at this demonstration. Neither did we even eat any man's food for nothing. That's how I want to be, boy. He said, every time somebody gave me something to eat, I said, man, let me give you something for that. Oh, I ain't broke. Let me get a seat. No, you don't have to give me that. Now, nah, I'm just telling you, I'm really doing good. I didn't take nothing for nothing. He said, I knew in my position, 
I could. He said, but examples been ordered. So I got to show you just in case you've never seen it done before. I didn't eat nobody's bread for nothing. But we worked with labor. Sometimes you might not have money. But you said, let me get that for you. Let me show you my gratitude. The stuff I'm about to do for you is going to be worth way, way more than that windy single that you bought for me. You're going to be like, it was just a hamburger. It wasn't nothing. You'd be like, nah. I looked at the fact that you thought enough of me to do something for me. You don't even know who I am. Yeah, God has sent me here for a reason. See, we never ate any man's bread for nothing, but we wrought with labor. Look what it said. And travail. Went through warfare. Day and night. That we might not be chargeable to any of you. That you might not turn around and look at us and say, you owe me. Paul said, I made sure you ain't going to never be able to say, I owe you nothing. Bible says, owe no man nothing but to love them. Look what it says in verse number nine. Hallelujah. Minister Juan, but read that verse number nine. Hallelujah. Verse number nine. Not because we do not have authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us. You see that? Hallelujah. Not because we don't have authority or we don't have power. But to be an example. Everybody say, Lord, make me an example. Lord, make me an example. See, when we understand this, we begin to recognize that there is a shortage in this world. And God has set the stage to pull the curtains back. Y'all ever had a you ever had a parent that found out that their child was the star in the play? You wouldn't be able to tell that there's other parents in the audience at that time. Because the parent is like, that, that's my baby, the star, the main one, the main character. How can that parent sit there and hold all that on the inside and not tell nobody? You think if the Lord has chosen you for something, you think you can hide? The Lord is like, well, that's mine right there. Even to the degree that Satan is like, he gonna let you die. The Lord said, you don't know what I vested in that one. Go ahead and try. Hallelujah. Yeah, but. Well, what about if they start crying? The Lord said, that's a part of the process. Hallelujah. There gonna be a day when they won't cry. There's going to be a day where it don't hurt as bad. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Because we're living around people, y'all, who are void of the fear of the Lord. We're living around people who are reckless in their morals. We're living around people that don't even have a standard. The moral compass is broken. And there's at least four different types of five different types of people. There's your babes, those who are believers, but they're real young in the Lord. You got your ignorant, those just never been told no better. You got the religious, they hear it, they just don't do nothing about what they hear because they just want to have an image. Then you got your lost, those who are just lost. And then lastly, you have the brethren. These are the ones that, hallelujah, they've shown some fruit. They show that they're serious about this thing. Notice the scripture says, I command you, we command you that you withdraw yourself from everyone who's called a brother who chooses to walk disorderly. You 
think it's a gamble. You can choose what you choose to vacillate in. And it's important for us to understand that examples have been ordered. Don't ever cling on somebody so much as if you think that you have to depend on them. No, you depend on Christ. If they be any, if they be any weak among you, if you're strong, bear the infirmities, but don't put your trust in somebody. Because cursed is the man that puts his trust in man. Praise the Lord. Let me show you another example real quick. Go to 1 Samuel real quick. 1 Samuel 12. Because evidently Samuel caught a wind too that some people thought this was a joke. They looked at it like it must not be real. Samuel said, even if I got to be the only one, let me show you what time it is. Real talk. Even Isaiah came out and said it was in the year that King Isaiah died that I saw the Lord. Isaiah said, then I heard the voice of the Lord say, who shall I send? Hallelujah. And Isaiah looked around. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Elijah even came out and said, Lord, I'm the only one left. Hallelujah. There is no other one. And the Lord said, Now nah, I got some more examples. You're not the only Everybody said, You're not the only example. Some people stuck on snooze. The alarm been going off. They're just snoozing. I'm going to sleep a little bit longer. Praise the Lord. Everybody say, shut your snooze off. Shut your snooze off. Boy, it's dangerous. Anybody ever shut that snooze off and fell all the way back to sleep? Yeah. <laughs> How many of y'all like me, you had to put the snooze far away from you to make you have to get your butt up out the bed? Y'all, there have been times that I had to record my own voice and tell, get up! You know that because if you listen to that same song over and over again, eventually you just sleep right on through it. And I was tired of me. Yo, sometimes you gotta know yourself. It's real. I remember I was on a plane flying in the Orleans, and I was like, I've been saying I need to get up at four, and I keep oversleeping. And when I, when I got a revelation, I recorded, I said, I know you don't want me to get up. Get up! Who was I talking to? Me. God said a man that can rule his own spirit is mightier than a man that can take a whole city. First Samuel 12 and 3. Samuel says, Behold, here I am. Witness against me. And I want you to know we're standing before the Lord. Witness against me. That's what Samuel said. He said, before his anointed, whose ox have I ever taken? Whose eggs have I taken? Whom have I ever defrauded? Who have I ever beat out of some money? Whom have I ever oppressed? I left you and you feel worse after I met you. Who have I ever oppressed? Of oh, whose hand have I received any bribe? You want me to compromise and you're going to pay me to do it. Whose hand have I? He said, I'm just asking y'all. He talking to the whole nation of Israel. Who did you ever see me take something under the table for? To blind my eyes. And look what he said. And if I ever did, I'll restore you. I'm going to give it back to you. Verse number four. And they said, Thou has not defrauded us. You have never oppressed us. Neither have you ever taken anything from our hand under the table. Verse number five. Oh, my Lord. And he said unto them, Okay. 
the Lord is a witness against you and his anointing is witness this day that you have not found aught in my hand can't say I did anything wrong the, the scripture says judge yourself and you will not even be judged and they answered he is a witness verse number 6 and Samuel said unto the people it is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron who is Moses and, Moses and Aaron examples where examples came from people said the Lord called them the Lord advanced Moses and Aaron and because of Moses and Aaron, look what he said, brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Oh my God. Verse number seven. Now therefore stand still that I might reason with you before the Lord of all the righteous acts of the Lord, which he did to you and to your fathers. Hallelujah. Verse number eight. When Jacob was coming to Egypt, your fathers cried unto the Lord. Let me tell you something. It's very important for us to make sure that when we cry, that we make sure we cry to the Lord. Because I need y'all to know there's a lot of people doing a lot of crying, but they're not crying to the Lord. Some people crying behind a sugar daddy. Some people crying because they didn't get that job, or they don't have that car, or, or, or they don't have that favor, they don't have that influence. They don't have what they wish they had and they're crying. But the scripture says sometimes God would allow you to cry until you direct all of your attention. Take it off of that stuff. Turn to me. He said when they cried to the Lord. Oh my God. Then the Lord did what? Okay. You want to change the situation? Let me send you some examples. Yo, examples are order. I know we're living in a world that they're not acting like it. But every one of you under the sound of my voice, if you chose to stick around long enough to hear this, I need you to know it's because you was on order. You've been ordered. You didn't just show up. You were ordered to be here. Hallelujah. Lord sent Moses and Aaron which brought forth your fathers out of Egypt made them dwell in this place verse number 9 and when they did what y'all what your Bible say isn't that amazing that we can have such a blessed experience with the Lord and next thing you know somebody talking to us about the Lord and you like who is that the Lord who I know you're saying to yourself that you would never say that with your mouth. But what are you doing? What are you showing? You haven't been an example. They forgot. Lord, help me not to forget, Lord. Help me to never forget what you've done for me, Father. Lord, I know there's so many temptations, so many traps, so many trials. Father, I thank you right now, Lord God, for never leaving me, never forsaking me. When they forgot the Lord their God, you want to know why I pray like that? When they forgot, look at what God did to them. When they forgot, he sold them. They became slaves, y'all. Into the hand of Sisera, captain of the host of Hazor, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab, and they fought against them. Y'all, sometimes the struggle you're going through is designed to bring you back to the Father. And what happened? Verse number 10. They cried again. Y'all see that? Who they cried to this time? The Lord. Oh my God. Cried to the Lord and said, We have sinned. Y'all, we gotta be able to confess our sins. We have sinned. 
because we have forsaken the Lord. We've served Baileen, hallelujah, and Asheron, which is also a part of Easter where they got them Easter eggs and the bunnies and all that stuff. And ain't got nothing to do. Y'all, even the Bible records it because it was so common. It was the time of Easter and people think that just because the word is in the Bible they think we're supposed to say we celebrate Easter. No, that was a season of a paganistic ritual that was taking place. Yes, sir. And they said it was during that time that all of a sudden Christ had to reveal and make manifest the Passover. Hallelujah. But now deliver us out of the hand of our enemies. And we will serve you. Y'all, if you got some things going on, just begin to tell the Lord, Lord, I don't want to suffer anymore. I don't want any more of this affliction. Deliver me, Lord God, and I will serve you. What you saying? Lord, make me an example. Make me, y'all, examples are order. Are you on back stock right now? Are you ready? Are you coming out? Have you come out the door yet? Or are you still back in that back room back there? Come on out. You've been ordered. Verse number 11. When they say we'll serve you, look what the Lord did in verse number 11. And the Lord sent Jerubbabel and Bethan and Jephthah and Samuel. That same Samuel we just got to talking about. And delivered you out of the head. Boy, listen to me. Let me tell you something. Everybody say, God made me an example. God made me an example. God made me an example. Who's being delivered because of you? If you are an example, God is going to set somebody free because of you. He said when he sent these examples, he delivered you out of the hand of your enemies. That means the example said, who is that showing up in your life right now? Man, get rid of that. Man, cut that off. Stop playing with him like that. Stop playing with her like that. Everybody said, Lord, deliver me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, on every side. And guess what? Y'all look what the last part of that verse says. After your enemies were handled and you got delivered, the scripture says, they dwelled safe. If they, they got some turmoil that you don't have to even go through, the turmoil is there to shake you and get you to a place where you realize, man, you've been on back stock for so long. You, you still in that back room? He asked Adam, where are you? You're supposed to be out on front street. Don't you know that that same devil that's talking to your wife, I gave you the authority over that enemy. You afraid to talk to him for what? I ain't afraid. Praise the Lord. He dwelled in safety. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now let's go to our last verse real quick. Philippians 3. I'm telling y'all, examples have been ordered. Hallelujah. I believe I'm an example. Hallelujah. I believe the Lord wants to use me. I think, I believe he still wants to use me. Y'all speak to yourself. Y'all speak to yourself. Hallelujah. I believe the Lord wants to use me. Hallelujah. I believe the Lord wants to use me. Hallelujah. Watch this. Philippians 3 and verse number 15. Sister Nisa, let me get you to read that verse 15. Oh, glory to your name, Father. Philippians 3 verse 15 says Let those of us who are mature think this way And if anything you think otherwise God will reveal that also to you Oh my God Praise the Lord What's your say for our brother Bosco Verse 15 All of us then Who are mature Should take such a view of things And if, and if on some point You think differently that to God will make clear to you. Hallelujah. Minister Judea, can you read that one also? Verse number 15, he's giving you the microphone, baby. 
Verse number 15. All of us who are mature, pursuing spiritual perfection, should have this attitude. And in any respect, you have a different attitude that to God would make clear to you. Hallelujah. My translation says, Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything be, ye be otherwise minded, God is going to reveal it to you. God is going to show you. It's important, y'all, for us to understand that. That Remember I told y'all, there's babes, there's the ignorant, there's the religious, there's the lost, and then there's the brother. He says, as many of us as be perfect, I'm showing you this is the mind you got to have. This is the way you got to think. What else after that? Verse 16, Minister G. Verse 16. Only let us hold true to what we have already attained and walk and order our lives by that. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, where to we have already attained, meaning if you, everybody say, I already received this word. When they say you attained it, that means you already got it. What you got is going to be tested. Do you really have it? Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by what we receive. Everybody say the same gift. The same gift. Whatever you receive from the Lord, give that to everybody else. Now, don't put that in the back room. Put it out. You the light. Shine. Praise the Lord. Verse number 17. Hallelujah. Brother Melvin, can, you, can I get you to read that, man? Verse number 17. Give me that microphone. Hallelujah. Join in and attend me, brothers and sisters. And pay careful attention to those who live according to the example you have in us. Oh, my God. Minister T, read that same one. Verse 17. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love this couple of stuff. Verse 17. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk, hallelujah, which walk so as ye have us for an, for an incept. Mm. Look what it says in verse number 17 in the easy English translation. My friends, all of you should try to do what I'm doing. Also, what? Look, also, watch. Everyone else. Look at me, but then watch everybody. Y'all ever get to the point where you're supposed to fall asleep? You're supposed to be paying attention. You're supposed to be watching and praying. Hallelujah. Watch everyone else who, like me, obeys God. Try to do what they do. Try to be like us. Oh, that must that must have been powerful, Paul, to say, "Man, man, we doing the same thing. I suppose we doing the same thing, bro." Then we look up and say, "Man, here come every minister, G. We we doing the same thing. It's all of us, Minister Muan. We doing the same thing. Like Sister Jalil, we doing the same thing." Elijah, we're doing the same thing. He said, we got to find people and tell them, don't just look at me. Look at all of us. All of us. God is trying to raise up a kingdom. A priest. Everybody say, I am a royal priesthood. I am a royal priesthood. Praise the Lord. We just about done, y'all. Verse number 18. Hallelujah. Verse number 18. Minister Muamba, get that 18. Hallelujah. Verse number 18. For many walk, of whom I've told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Listen to this. He's letting us know right here, there's examples of who's doing it wrong. He said they're doing it so bad. I don't know if you're going to get caught up. 
So he said, I'm weak, I'm crying, telling you this. You can't believe everybody. Just because they're talking a good talk, sometimes they got seven devils on the inside of them. That's some scary stuff. Seven abominations on the inside. He says, so I'm telling you, and I'm telling you this even while I'm crying, that there are those who are enemies of the cross of Christ. Verse number 19, what they gonna get? Whose end is destruction? They say they love God, but look what the word said. Who is their real God? What y'all Bible say? Their belly, they stuck. What they really want is what they're desiring from the inside. That God is their belly. And look what it says, and whose glory is in their shame. Because they mine earthly things. Verse number 20, last one, y'all. For our conversation is where? From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto the glorious. Hallelujah. According to the working whereby he is even able to subdue all things to himself. Y'all listen to this. Our conversation and everything that we do has to be like the oracles of God. Hallelujah. I'm not saying this in a haphazard way because sometimes it is difficult. What do I do? That no matter what kind of test I go through, I speak as an oracle, as a living epistle, as the living word. What do I do? How do I do that? I must meditate on this word. The degree of how much you choose to med meditate is based on the revelation of to what degree the example the Lord is raising you up to be. You know, let's all stand up together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to speak to one of your friends and let your friend know that what they need is no longer on back order. It's here. It's here. The Lord wants your friends to know, like sometimes your friends are crying, Lord, can you do this, can you do that? And it's like you just have the person at the stove, uh, it hadn't made it yet. The Lord wants your people, your friends, your associates to know that you made it, that you're here. When you show up to work, it's a little different than when you showed up to work yesterday. Sometimes there's an agitation on the workplace. Not because everything is out of order necessarily on the job. But because of what we carry when we show up. There's things sometimes that get shaken. And the Lord says, I need you to discern what's going on. Sometimes the thing that you're complaining about is the very thing that the Lord is using to draw the curtains back. Because the Lord is like, I don't know about the other ones. That's my child in there. Oh no, I ain't going to let you hide. They're going to pick with you. They're going to challenge you. They're going to mock you. Now the question is, what are you going to do? So, Father, right now, we lift up our hands before you, Lord God. Father, we understand that examples have been ordered. I speak the word of the Lord over everyone that is in this building, everyone that is on Zoom, everyone that is watching right now. Father, I pray right now for courage. I pray for boldness. I pray for peace right now. 
that when the time of the test comes, you don't have to run to the back. Answer the call. The Lord says, and Lord, I stand at the door and knock. I'm knocking. The Lord says, answer. He says, don't be afraid. He said, through you, I'll demonstrate my wonders. Be bold enough to ask. If you ask, you're going to receive. If you seek, you'll find. If you knock, the door is going to be open unto you. So, Father, we thank you. We honor you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.